Welcome back to the channel where medical topics are made easy. In this video, we're going to simplify medical terminology. Before we get started, make sure to turn on the caption and read along. This will help with learning and memory retention. So what is medical terminology? It's the language used to describe things like anatomy, structures, conditions, diagnoses, procedures, treatments, and much more. And learning these medical words can be tough at first. It can almost feel like a different language. But if you break the word down, it can really help you better understand the medical term. Most medical terms have a beginning, middle, and end, and when combined, they help describe the word. So let's take a look at each part. The prefix is not always present, but when it is, it forms the beginning of the word. The easy way to think of the prefix is it's generally the descriptive part of the medical term. So it helps describe characteristics like a location, direction, number, quantity, amount, size, or color. Next is the root. The root forms the middle of the word, and if there is no prefix, then it's going to form the first part of the word. The easy way to think about the root is it gives the medical term its core meaning. It's the subject of the word, and it often pertains to a body part or system. Finally, we have the suffix, which forms the end of the word. The easy way to think about the suffix is it brings meaning to the medical term. The suffix might indicate a disease, disorder, condition, procedure, process, specialty, or test. So let's take a look at an example. We're going to use hyperthyroidism. We can see the word has a beginning, which is the prefix, a middle, which is the root, and an end, which is the suffix. Hyper means above normal or in excess. Thyroid refers to the thyroid gland, and ism describes a condition. So hyperthyroidism is a condition in which the thyroid gland is overactive and it produces too much hormone. You can see once you know the meaning of these common word elements, you'll be able to put them together and figure out what the medical term means. We're going to focus on common prefixes in this video, and then the next couple of videos we're going to talk about the roots and suffixes, so make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on those, and you're also going to want to check out the previous video on common medical abbreviations. Let's begin with common prefixes that describe a quantity, so these are things like numbers or amounts. Hit pause in the video and see how many you can name, or if you're just learning medical terms for the first time, then you can watch the video a second time and see how many you get right. Starting with mono, this means one or single. You can think of a monocle, which is a single eyeglass, to remember mono refers to one. Uni also refers to one, and you can think of a unicycle, which has a single wheel. The prefix bi, di, or diplo means two or double, and tri refers to three or triple. You can think of a bicycle which has two wheels and a tricycle which has three wheels. In medical terminology, you can think of your biceps and triceps. Biceps means two heads or parts, and triceps means three heads or parts. Next, we have the prefix qua, which means four or quadruple. You can think of a quadrilateral here, which is a four-sided shape or figure. Or in medical terms, you can think of your quadriceps, which contain four parts or muscles. Next, we have semi or semi, which refers to half, and hemi also means half or one side. So you can think of a semicolon, which is a half of a colon. Next, we have the prefix equa or iso, which means equal, and you can think of an equilateral triangle, which has three equal sides in length. Finally, we have u and norma, which both mean normal. So in medicine, you can say euglycemic, which means a normal level of sugar in the blood, and normotensive, which means normal blood pressure. We have a few more prefixes that have to do with quantities and also a couple that have to do with sizes that are included here as well. Again, hit pause and see how many you can answer correctly. First, we have hyper, which means above normal, in excess, high, or elevated. You can think of a hyper child who has a lot of energy to help you remember hyper refers to overactive or above normal. Hypo is the opposite. It means below normal, deficient, low, or decreased. For example, hypoglycemia is the state in which blood sugar or glucose is low. Next, we have a or an, which means absent or lacking. This is easy to remember, just use the a to remember the word absent. An example in medicine would be anoxia, which is the absence of oxygen reaching the tissues and organs. Pan and omni both mean all. For example, pancytopenia is the deficiency of all three cell components of blood which are white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. You can also think of omnivores, which eat all food types, including plant and animal origin. 
Multi or multi and poly both mean many or a lot. This is easy to remember, just use multi to think of multiple. Or you can think of polygon, which is a shape that has multiple sides. The prefix micro means small, and opposite of that is macro, which refers to large. Megalo is also another way of saying large. For micro, just think of microscope to help you remember small, and then macro is simply going to be the opposite of that. And then for megalo, just think of mega to help you remember big. Finally, we have oligo, which means few or very little. Prefixes can also be used to describe color. Try to fill in the blanks and then see if you're right. The general prefix for color is chromo or chromato. You can think of chromosome, which means colored body, to help you remember chromo means color. Chromosomes got their name for the colorful dyes that are used to stain them in research in order to better see them, so they become these colorful bodies. Next, we have the prefix alb, which refers to pale. You can think of albino, which refers to a person or animal with the congenital absence of pigment, and this causes them to appear pale or white. Next is chloro, which means green. You can think of chlorophyll, which is the green pigment in plants. Next is cyano, which refers to blue. For example, in medical terms, cyanosis refers to a bluish discoloration of the skin, and this is typically from poor circulation or low oxygen levels in the blood. Next, we have erythro, which means red. You may have heard of erythrocytes, which are red blood cells. Glaco refers to opaque or gray. Next is leuco, which means white. Similar to erythrocytes, which are the red blood cells, leukocytes are the white blood cells. Melano or melano means black. You can think of melanoma, which is a cancer of the melanocytes, and the melanocytes are what produce melanin and the dark pigmentation of the skin. Another prefix for gray is polio. Porphyr means purple, and the prefix roto means a rose color red. Finally, we have xantho, which refers to yellow. There's a medical term called xanthochromia, so if we break the word down, we know xantho means yellow and chromo means color. Xanthochromia refers to the yellow color seen in cerebrospinal fluid several hours after a bleed into the subarachnoid space, usually from a subarachnoid hemorrhage. So you can start to see that by breaking down the word and knowing the meaning for common prefixes can help bring meaning to the medical term. Next, we have prefixes that have to do with time and speed. How many can you name before looking at the answers? The first two are easy. Pre means before and post means after. You can think of preoperative, which refers to the period of time before a surgery, and postoperative, which refers to the time after a surgery. There are two more prefixes that can mean before, and they're pro and anti. An example medical term is antepartum, which refers to before childbirth. Next, we have the prefix re, which means again. This one is easy to remember. Just think of the word repeat to help you remember the prefix re means again. Then we have retro, which means back or backward. You can think of retro with fashion, and when something is retro, it's from the past, and this will help you remember retro means backwards. Neo means new, and you can think of neonatal, which refers to a newborn child. Next is chrono, which refers to time. You can think of things being in chronological order, which refers to the order in which events occurred from earliest to latest. The last two prefixes, tacky and brady, both refer to speed. Tacky means fast, and brady means slow. These terms are frequently used with the heart. Tachycardia means a fast or rapid heart rate, and bradycardia refers to a slow heart rate. Another example is tachypnea, which is a fast or rapid respiratory rate. Let's move on to prefixes that have to do with location or position. Some locations have more than one prefix that can be used, so we're going to make it easy by using the green box to label and visualize the different positions. Beginning with the first four prefixes, which are epi, hyper, supra, and super, they all mean above, upon, or on. Remember we used hyper when talking about amounts. Above can refer to a position, or it can refer to amounts like above normal. So if we go to the green box, we can label epi, hyper, supra, and super above the image. The next three prefixes, which are sub, hypo, and infra, all mean below, beneath, or under. They're essentially the opposite of epi, hyper, and supra. Remember we also used hypo when talking about amounts. Below can refer to a position or can refer to amounts like below normal or deficient. So if we go back to the green box again, 
We can label sub, hypo, and infra below the image. Next, we have dextro, which means right or on the right side. We're going to label the right and left on the green box as if we're looking at a radiology image. So things on the right will be on the left side of the screen, and things on the left will be on the right side of the screen. The final two prefixes are levo and sinistro, which both mean left or on the left side, and we've labeled that on the green box as well. You can remember left and levo both start with the letter L to make it easier for you. Let's continue with more prefixes that have to do with location and position and take a look at the ones referring to front, back, and around. The first three prefixes, anti, antero, and ventri or ventro, all refer to front, in front of, or anterior. If we go back to the green box, we're now going to look at it from the side, so the front is on the right of your screen and the back is on the left of your screen, and we're going to label anti, antero, and ventri or ventro on the front. You might remember we used anti when we talked about time. So anti means before, and the before can be used as a time, or before can be used as a position, meaning in front of. There are a couple tricks to remember that all these terms mean anterior. Anti, antero, and anterior. I'll start with anti, so that's pretty easy. And for ventri, you can think of ventriloquist, which means stomach talker. The stomach is in the front, which can help you remember ventri means to the front. The next two prefixes are postero and dorsi or dorso, which mean back, behind, or posterior, and we're going to label those behind the box. Postero is essentially the opposite of antero, and dorsi or dorso is the opposite of ventri or ventro. Postero sounds like posterior, so that one's easy to remember, and for dorsi, you can think of a dorsal fin on the back of a fish or a shark to remember back. Finally, we have peri and circum, which mean around or surrounding and we'll label those with a circle around the square. You can also use the circle to think of peri and perimeter, and circum and circumference to remember these terms mean around or surrounding. As we continue with location and position, there are also prefixes that have to do with inside, outside, away, toward, and through. So let's take a look at those. Endo, intra, and intro all mean inside, internal, within, interior, or inner, which we're going to label inside the box. You can think of endoscope, which is an instrument used to view the inside of the body, and you can also remember that intro and intra, along with inside, internal, inner, and interior, all begin with the letters IN or N. The opposite of that is exo, extra, or extro, which all mean outside, external, exterior, or outer, and we're going to label that outside the box. You can think of an exit sign which takes you outside and begins with the letters EX, the same way that EXO, EXTRA, and EXTRO do. You might also see the prefix ECTO, which means outside as well. Think of ectoderm, which is the outermost layer of cells and tissues in an embryo. Next we have AB, which refers to moving away from, and we have AD, which means moving toward. In medical terms, abduction and adduction are commonly used to describe the extremities moving away or toward the body. So for example, abducting the arms or legs, that's abducting, means moving them away from the body, and adducting the extremities, which is adducting, refers to moving them toward the body. The easy way to remember this is to think of adduction and ad, and you're adding to the rest of the body. Finally, we have trans, which means through or across. You can think of transfer or transportation, which is the movement across two points, or translucent or transparent, which is light going through or across something. Let's wrap this up with positions and locations that refer to middle, lateral, nearby, and between. Meso along with meta or medio or media all refer to middle or midline. It's easy to remember because they all start with the letter M. An example medical term is mesoderm, which means the middle layer of an embryo, the same way that ectoderm meant the outside layer. Next, we have the prefix latero, which means lateral or to one side. It's easy to remember because latero and lateral sound the same. Next, we have para, which refers to nearby, alongside, or beside. You can think of a parachute, and if you're going to jump off a plane, you want your parachute alongside or nearby you. You can see we've got a red box labeled para nearby the green one. Juxta means next to. You can think of juxtapose, which means putting two or more things side by side. You can see we've got our green juxta box next to the main green one. Next we have inter, which refers to between, 
Make sure to not confuse inter with intra or intro, which means inside. Ambi or amphi mean both or both sides. You can remember ambi and ambidextrous, which is the ability to use both hands equally well, and you can use amphi and amphibians, which live in both the water and on land throughout their life cycle, and these terms will help you remember both. Finally, we have ipsi, which means the same, and contra, which means against. These are typically used with the medical terms ipsilateral and contralateral, where ipsilateral means the same side as what is being referenced, versus contralateral is the opposite side of what is being referenced. So if we reference two things on the same side of the green box as depicted by the stars, then they're ipsilateral. But if we reference something on the other side of the green box in relation to the first star, then that second star is contralateral. Hopefully this helped you better understand medical terminology and prefixes. If you found the video useful, please hit the like button and comment down below. Make sure to subscribe to not miss out on the next medical terminology video, along with other future medical topics made easy. You can find all of the notes and tables for this video on the website linked down below in the description. Thanks for watching and hope you check out future videos.